join. All right, this is Giami Journey Radio. I am your host, Brother Hot Tim. Unfortunately, on Spreaker, I am not coming live because I want to make sure that you can have a quality quality podcast. Um, my internet connection dropped about five times last night, so I want to make sure that I could give y'all a whole show on Spreaker because I I I want y'all to know that I truly, truly appreciate you. Um, this is GM Journey Radio. Right now we are on Tribal Quotes, and of course this is a Heart of a Summer production. And you know that I always strive to blow up your old parents. <laughs> Alright, so here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. The news, the news, the news. Well, well, first, before we even get into the news, before we even get into the news, right, um, I need to get y'all to start checking out my YouTube station. Every morning, I'm doing a small little thing called the Tribal Toast. Well, even Tribal Toast, Daily Toast. Now... What the, what's that about? That's about doing a libation type thing. Except we drinking the libations rather than just pouring them on the earth. All right, drinking, taking some healthy liquids into our body. So here we go. I am a Giami man. Born for greatness. My greatness comes from my potent center. I pledge to find and connect with my center. I pledge to build my spirit, mind, and body. I pledge to use my hands to build a better world for myself, my loved ones, and my community. I pledge to use my mind to think deeper, further, and higher to create a better reality for myself. I pledge to live my life and go beyond all my self imposed limitations. I pledge to promote the principles of the Giami warrior and to assist all those seeking the path of success. I pledge all these things first to myself, to my teachers, to all my relations, and to my higher power. I am Giami. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. That is the Giami Pledge that is said by all of our true members at least once a day. Peace and welcome to our YouTube channel. Check out our videos and podcasts. Subscribe as well as join the journey. Push past your self-imposed limitations with in the Giami journey. Peace. Two black, two strong. That's right, two black, two strong, y'all. So, hey, now, um, once again, before we get into the news, I want to send some shots out. I, I haven't been doing this. Uh, I just started doing this, so I need to go and let y'all know. Jamie Journey, we got our books. You know, y'all gonna get, 
Get your connection on the books. You know what I'm saying? I have the Warriors Handbook for Life's Journey, the Giami Method, Nation Builder and Warrior Training and that. We got, well, Seven Sticks is not available, but you know, like I said, getting enough people asking, I could go and convince the people that I'm in partnership with to bring this book out. We could go and bring that out, but I need people talking about they want Seven Sticks. Now, those that want to hear Seven Sticks, I have a a podcast on Seven Sticks on my Spreaker radio station. All right, so all you got to do is go back into my uh, timeline on Spreaker, and you can find it. I got it up already. I read it. This is my flagship book, my very first book. It's called The Player's Pyramid. This is the secret to Giame. This is the secret to success. Well, really ain't no secret to success, but... This is something that can help you, and it's based on our philosophy far as the Guza Saba, using principles to move us forward in our life. Last but not least, we have the title book of this podcast, Tribal Quotes. This is a compilation of uh, quotes that I did over a two to three year period. I put I, I was posting them up every day. I figured, hey, let's put them up in a book, in a handbook, and I tell you how to work with them in the book. You know what I'm saying? Of course, all proceeds. I ain't gonna say all proceeds. A large portion of the proceeds go to support Giami Journey, so we continue our work. Before we get any deeper, we have to go and pop the bottom. So y'all get ready, cause this one is a lively one. This is the green top. This is the God body. Oh man, they are extremely calm in January and February. Oh, look at that. Oh, go, girl, go. It's a little bit lively, but it ain't tripping. I appreciate that. You know, I'm learning. I'm learning as I go. I'm learning as I go. This is that God body, y'all. Bladder rack and sea moss. The formula was put together by a brother by the name of, well, I'm just say Brother Nesbitt. He might not want his name all on Facebook like that. But he put together, he mixed the tea for me so that we could do this. You can smell the ocean in it. All right? Okay. Whew. Mm. All right. So now, let's do this. We're going to run into some news. Then we're going to get into the African openness to the tree of life. I told y'all, I promised y'all, and I try to keep all my promises. I promised y'all that this episode will give you some secrets to not only change your life, but change some of your children's life or some of the young people around you, around you, lives. Listen, so, you know what I'm saying? Those that are within the sound of my voice, you need to share this one. I'm trying to tell you because these proverbs are about basically mastery and growing up. These are some of my favorite ones, um, and they just happen to fall on the weeks where uh, the Great Pumpkin is going wild, right? All right, so I'm going to move down a little bit. We're going to go down the Jeremy Journey timeline. Of course, we got uh, the uh, the live stream up, right? Um, I have a, a, comment, a comment line. So, uh, feel free to comment. Alright. Oh, snap. Alright, I figured out how to do it now so I can communicate on this thing. Now, so, those are all that will be watching live and watching live on Facebook in the future, I know how to get, I got a comment thread just for this, all right. Uh, no, nah, I don't, but I want to make sure that I'm able to see Giami journey. That's a problem, y'all. All right, so I'll come back to it. I'll just kick it out in a minute. Let's see. Let's go, Giami tribe. All right, because I want to see the news. Calm down, Gina G. I don't want you to kick nothing. All right. Now. First of the news, I was walking out the office today and somebody told me about this scholarship opportunity. 
It's called the privilege grant. Now, the privilege grant. I'm not going to ruin it for you. I want you to look it up. Because you might qualify. You might be able to get some of this free money that's flowing out here. Go to the privilege grant. And let's talk about it. <clears throat> Matter of fact, I'm going to type it in. I want everybody to look up the privilege grant. And come on, holler at Brother Hot Tim. All right? You know what I'm saying? Type in. Type in. I was on there. All right, type in privilege grant. You might qualify. You know what I'm saying? Very interesting. Very interesting. You know what I'm saying? Get some of that free money while it's out there. You know, it's a, it's a great opportunity for a lot of y'all. You know what I'm saying? To, to get... To to um to to further your horizons and to add some uh, credentials to your life, um the privilege grant might just be for you. You, you, yeah, it might just be for you. All right, now um wait for a few people to get on because I got some controversial shit to say. All right, Trump moves roll back Obama era financial regulations. So they're going to knock out some um, regulations. You know what I'm saying? I bet you all those regulations around business. Y'all know the great pumpkin ain't playing. He not playing, right? Not playing at all. Now, in the news, I was looking for it, but I couldn't get it. In Australia. The Catholic Church was caught with their pants down once again. Yep. And they say, I think they said at least 5% of all of the young people that were, especially boys, that were in the Catholic Church were uh, violated, let's say. Right? They was caught with their pants down. Right now, but this is what's crazy. Most people won't talk about it for 30 years. You know what I'm saying? This is how strong the indoctrination is. 30 years, you're suffering because somebody that you trusted, somebody that was supposed to be your bridge to communicate with your higher being, the highest being in the universe, molested you. Mm. A lot of y'all went to those Catholic schools. All right, but we're going we're gonna to keep it moving. Uh, oh, wow, this got to... Okay, so I put up the February calendar. Of course, y'all know today... Uh, today is Ujima. Ujama. No, Ujama's tomorrow, baby. Today is Ujima, Collective Worker Responsibility. Um... It is also righteousness, respect, my fault, I forgot that one, vibration. Uh, I think the African male name is Kwaku, and the female name is Akua, right? A lot going on today, a lot of positive energy that you could have been drawing on to improve your life, all right? Um, in 2022, mark your calendar. It will be a star that will explode in 2022. I think I'm going to be in a place to be so I can check that out. All right. Um, I'm doing my daily toast. So I popped up my episode, um, this morning. I was able to do it earlier. Uh, let's go to the news feed. Then we're going to get into these proverbs. Cause I ain't going to hold y'all too long. All right. All right. Uh, oh, Iran. Iran, the, the supreme leader of Iran. <laughs> the supreme leader of Iran says, thank you, America, for showing your true face. It's almost, I, I got to check and see if he one of my fan, friends on Facebook because it sounds it sound like he uh, read my timeline. 
Because that's all that that's all we get an opportunity to see. You know what I'm saying? The true face of America. You know, they showing out. Let's see. See, I like it on my phone better, but I'm since I'm streaming live on my phone, I can't really get down into it, into the news, because that's where all my good news be. Alright, so now. Hmm, oil stable after drop in USA. How you doing, Mr. Bridges? Welcome. Oil stable after dropping, dropping U.S. gasoline stocks, but market remains bloated. Now, I got a question for all those people who are into the economy. If the economy is... Name one thing in nature that can survive that constantly grows. They're always talking about growth in the economy. But how much more can the economy grow? I mean, is this a never-ending thing? You know what I'm saying? Do a lot of y'all realize that um, economics, the science of economics is more of an art rather than a, a precise science? I mean, because if it was a precise science, they would have been be able to predict these crashes that's been popping up like every 10 years, right? We do about due for another crash, but a lot of economists ain't seeing it, right? Um, so, um, and y'all do understand that when gas prices go down, although it's good for us, although it's good for us, it's not good for the rest of the world. You know what I'm saying? It hurt businesses. Thanks for sharing, um, Mr. Bridges. Um, now, so, my news line is kind of boring right now. So we're going to get right into these proverbs, right? We're going to discuss these proverbs. Oh, wait, hold on. U.S. Army to grant final permit for controversial D Dakota Pipeline. You know what I'm saying? Now, we have to understand the lines are being drawn. This call is being recorded. The lines are being drawn, right? We have to start drawing our lines as well, right? Now, this is where I'm saying that, right? When you look at the, the I mean... All the executive orders that this dude is going through and signing, man. He, he's going through and, and he's making massive changes. And I'm hearing, see, because a lot of us think uh, we're going to move into a dictatorship. Y'all got to understand, all that, all that's old. Nobody's doing, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Only in those, you know, maybe in third world countries where they might be five generations behind us. You don't do dictatorships in places like America. I heard we're moving towards a term called autocrat. Um, what is it? Autocracy or uh, aut I don't know. I got aristocracy. Huh? Aristocracy. It, yeah. Aristocracy. No, 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 no. That's that's royalty. It's it's autocratic. We're moving towards an auto autocracy. You know what I'm saying? And it's like it's it's a sophisticated way of dominating and controlling people. Um. By the way. Welcome, Brother D. Can you say something so I can make sure you're on the mic? Peace. Okay, cool. I want to make sure you're on the mic. Um, so, but um, we're moving towards, how can I put it? Because we're moving towards a government. First off, I got Google right in front of me. I'm not ashamed to Google. I'm going to type and I'm going to read. Um, the definition. You know what I'm saying? Because I got here late. I ain't get time to do some of the research. Uh, autocracy. Hold on. Let me see if they pronounce it for me. Autocracy. Autocracy. That's it. Autocracy. A system of government by one person with absolute power. They don't call it. You know what I'm saying? It's a dictatorship when you crew. It's an autocracy when you got a little bit of polish about yourself, right? You know what I'm saying? When you got a little technology, it's an autocracy, right? And, I mean, because we look at the post, right? Because I'm kind of surprised with my my Google uh, timeline with uh, on my computer. It's different than my phone. I don't understand that. But if you look at some of the stuff, like, for example, Donald Trump attacks Nordstrom for dropping Ivanka Trump's clothing line right so we got the president right 
dictating policy through Twitter. Maybe I'm the only one that, that, that might see a problem with that. We have the top official, right, who clowned Hillary Clinton for uh, having her own private server who's basically ruling through Twitter. He affects the stock market. You know what I'm saying? He lets you know what's on his mind. You know what I'm saying? But he clowns somebody else for having their own server. You know what I'm saying? It, it, when Twitter is as public as you could go. We don't even know if he tweeting from a, 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 a super secret phone. As a matter of fact, we can, we can guess that he's not. This is why. Because on those stripped down phones that they give you that's super secure, they can't have a lot of stuff coming into it because they would not be able to guarantee that they're going to keep it secure. So there is no Twitter on a presidential phone. There is no Facebook on a presidential phone. It's super secure. You could talk on it and nobody's supposed to hear. But this dude is able to pick up a cell phone that could tape everything in the room, take pictures of everybody in the room, right? Carrying it around with him, handling American business. Hey, we living in a new age. Um, Donald Trump threatened to defund California. The great pumpkin is on the wrong. You know what I'm saying? You know, hey, hey, hey. I, but I ain't mad at him. I ain't mad at him, right? Because all he's doing is basically pushing an agenda that demonstrates to the world and to people in America the very same things that many of my elders and myself have been talking about for years, right? So now we have an opportunity to build. The only question I have to ask is, are we willing to practice Ujima and start to build it now, right? We have to. We have to. Because if we don't start building now, right, we may never get another chance. Because now, what y'all got to understand, man, I keep harping on this, man. I make what my grandfather made. And once again, let me let me walk you through that timeline. When my grandfather was making his money, I am making what he made. My grandfather bought a house. My grandfather didn't like the neighbors that lived in the house next door to him, so he bought that house. He tore that house down and made himself a nice garage. My grandfather liked to travel, so he bought a van so that he could travel with his family. My grandfather took me in when my mother moved to Columbus. My grandfather took care of my grandmother who lived in the house and didn't have to work, and she just took care of the home. He also took care of my aunt's children. He had two other children in there, and he had me, and at any given time, anybody else that needed a place to stay could go stay at the house. He had a car. My grandmother had a car. Every two to three years, they would get a new car. Every summer, they would drive to Florida. He had a boat. He had a motorcycle. Him and his brother put money together, and they went out, and they bought more property. I make what my grandfather made. I live in an apartment. I'm struggling. Mm. So, although I make the same numerical value that my grandfather made, the value of the money is shrinking. While the price of everything is going up. So the money does not spread as far. So we are looking at the first generation in America that may be doing worse than their parents. So instead of the lifestyles increasing and growing like the economy that they're constantly talking about, everything is shrinking. You're working hard, but your money don't stretch. You're working hard, but your money's value has dropped. If we do not start building now, if we do not start changing our mind state now, if we do not start doing commerce together now, we will be stuck in a permanent underclass if we are all not if we are not already stuck. 
Because anybody that ever tried to start a business in America know what I'm talking about. It is hard to run a business in America with all the regulations and all that stuff, right? That's why some people who you wouldn't think would vote for Trump will vote for Trump because they think that maybe he might be able to knock some of these regulations out so that some of the small people can actually start trying to make some money. Because right now, all of our money is being sucked up out of our pockets. We need to start building, fam. We need to start learning to work together. We need to start learning how to do commerce together. We need to start learning how to do politics together. We need to start learning to do social things together. We need to start learning to educate our children together. You know what I'm saying? We need to start opening up like back in the day they used to have shoelaces. The education that our children are getting in the schools is not enough. And then on top of that, a lot of our kids are missing out on the basis of education because they don't know how to act. Ujima, collect the work of responsibility. One of our responsibilities is to start learning how to check our children and get them to understand that they're not at school for a social uh, for a social for a social gathering. They're at school to get information. They're at school to learn to learn to learn. Even though they're not getting nothing there. They're at school to learn to master themselves and to control themselves long enough so that they can get some information. And then on Saturday, we need to supplement the information they're getting and get some physical fitness going on with that as well. That's Ujima, right? All right, now, it's time for us. Dang, it's half an hour went by already. It's time for us. You still there, D? Yes, sir. Hey, man, you got something you want to share before we jump into these um, um, Proverbs? No, I was, I'm chomp- I'm ready, ready to get at the Proverbs, brother. Oh. Um, I posted up on the timeline. Um, I want some of y'all to apply for the privilege grant. Those of you out there listening, <laughs> I want you to apply for the get that money. You know what I'm saying? This is a a a a, a scholarship that some of you may be eligible for. I want you to go to the site privilege grant. I want you to look at. It. And come back and holler at me. Right? I, I posted it up on my timeline. You know what I'm saying? I want you to look at it. I'm, you know, see, because this is letting you know that the lines are being drawn. We need... Oh, my God. We need to gather up our, our tribe. We need to find out who our allies are. And we all need to start moving. Because a lot of us are suffering. We're going to find that a lot of people, right, out here are suffering and they're hurting, right? And one of the things that we miss, because this, I, I tried to cover this this morning in talking about um, Ujima, because today is Ujima, collective work and responsibility. The, our respons- we are responsible to learn from the struggle we're going through, not just be moaning and cry and walk away like the fox last night. We have to get the message in the struggle and we have to pass that information on because each generation struggles so that the next generation doesn't have the same struggles. That's how you move, right? And I want a lot of us to start thinking like this. We are generational people. Giami is a generational tribe. If you are listening, you, you, you. You know what I'm saying? You may be one of those generational people. What is a generational people? A generational person is a person that understands that you are coming back here. When you look at the world in a way, when you look at your life and the world in a way that you know that you're coming back here, and not only are you coming back here, you're not coming back here like other reincarnation myths. You're coming back to the same bloodline. When you look at African people, we talk about our ancestors coming back through the same bloodline. It ain't about you uh, growing up in America as a black man and then you're born um, over in uh, um, um, somewhere in West Asia and all of a sudden you you, you are a whole different people. No, no. For our people, when when you come back, you come back in that family line. So it's your responsibility to make sure that that family line makes some progress while you are here. Now look at your life in that way. Right? 
you might have to come back through your grandchild. So if you left your grandchild nothing, right? You left nothing but bills for your children. Your children had to struggle through. They had their children. Their children got to struggle through. Then your grandchildren have to struggle through. Now it's your turn to come back. Guess what? You coming back and your nickname is Pookie. You smelling like pee going to school. You know why? Because you didn't handle business in the first part of your life. We have an opportunity to set the stage for future generations. That's our responsibility. See, I mean, this is real to me. So, hey, all right. Um, you sure you ain't got nothing to do before we jump off into this? Y'all can feel free to comment. Yeah, I'm sure. Y'all can feel free to comment because I got I I I'm, I I got I got the timeline up. I can see. Um, for those on Spreaker, once again, I apologize. I, I I truly do. I apologize because what I was trying to do. Um, I want to make sure that y'all get quality on Spreaker. I want to make sure that you get a quality sound. What was happening with the last shows is that the radio that that Spreaker would drop, Spreaker would drop. And because Spreaker would drop, it would cut off and start a whole nother show. So this means that last night there are five different shows on my timeline. And that's not fair to those people who have been listening to me on Spreaker for the last five years. Right? I love the whole Facebook thing, but I got to make sure that the people that's been listening to me on Spreaker for a long time get what they deserve. You know what I'm saying? That's my responsibility. I think that's in Ujima, isn't it? All right. All right, Brother D, it's about to go down. You ready? Now, I told y'all last ready. week. I told y'all last week. I told y'all I'm not playing. I am not playing. Why is my mic off? My mic is on. Your mic is on, too. All right. I told y'all last week that I'm not playing. Family, listen to me. Listen to me. I'm not playing. Right? Those of you that want to call in, I'm going to put the call in number because... Um, something I say on this might spark you, but I came, I, I had a, a crazy prayer that hit me this morning and I was going to post it up on, um, Facebook, but I didn't want to be bombarded because there's a lot of angry people out there with, with what my prayer said. Should I say the prayer of uh, brother D? Cause it's kind of controversial and, um, I just, you know, um, I just want to make sure, you know, because I you, I want to put the disclaimer. Right. This is Brother Hot Tim. This ain't Giami Journey and, and my brothers and, and stuff involved with it. But being being that it's collective work and responsibility I'm, today, I'm thinking of different things. And the prayer that came to me <laughs> was, Dear God, Hold on. Moja Kuji Chaglia Ujima. Dear God, I accept you and your flaws. I just pray that you can accept mine. Now, mm. <laughs> uh, I, hey man, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? Because the. the these type of thoughts be coming through my mind. What if the creator is not perfect? What if the creator make mistakes? What if? I mean, I'm always asking these questions. The what if piece. Because I told y'all that's, that motif is strong with me. What if? See, and I remember studying uh, when, I, when, when I was reading about the Dogon. That when they talked about. The, the creation of the universe, they talked about the creator messing up. And, and in, in other African mythologies, they talk about the creator making mistakes. Right? Which kind which kind of balance stuff out for us. Right? Because it's like, you know, all this hell we going through, or all these troubles, all these beautiful struggles that we have. Right? What if they are just mistakes? What you know what I'm saying? And we just got to rough it through. Right? You know what I'm saying? So I accept you for your flaws. Can you accept me for mine? Alright, let's move on. Alright. 
So these proverbs, I promise you, one, two, three. <sighs> First one, proverb number one. Puberty may be like a swinging bridge if not given the lure to mastery, said the knowledge holders. Now remember, mastery is very important to our culture. That's number one. Number two, the adult phase marks responsibility, said the knowledge holders. A greater level of mastery. <laughs> Last one. Marriage is unity for making, said the knowledge holders. In making is the power of energy. Did you hear those? All right. Those that want to join the call, 614-556-4535. Let's chop it up about these proverbs. Life changing, life changing, life changing, because I'm about to go deep. I'm going to give Brother D a chance. I'm going to give him a chance. Well, actually, I ain't got to give him a chance because he always knocks them out the... I'm, I, I'm coming hard. All right. So, which one you want to start with, Brother D? One, two, or three. Uh oh. Uh oh. He done muted me. All right, here we go. I think my prayer might have. My prayer might have made him mad. <laughs> oh God, I accept you for your flaws. Can you accept me for mine? That's my prayer. <laughs> All right. On to the proverb. Puberty may be like a swinging bridge if not given a lure to mastery. Say the knowledge holders. We're going to start with number one. Puberty may be like a swinging bridge if not given a lure to mastery. Now, puberty. What happens at puberty? Anybody out there young enough to remember puberty? Right? Do you remember the confusion that you felt at puberty? Now, I want you to think about this not only as an individual, not only as a parent, but think about this as a, as a tribe builder and a, a nation builder. Somebody who wants to build something. It says puberty may be like a swinging bridge if not given a lure to mastery. Question. Where outside sports are we providing a lure to mastery for our kids? Specifically our kids. Right? Because I want y'all to understand. Other cultures are presenting their, their kids going through puberty with a lure to mastery. What's a lure? A lure is a is is like a little trick, a little shiny trinket, trinket that catches somebody's attention, right? <clears throat> and brings them towards it. Right? It lures them in. It brings them in. Right? Lure. A lure to mastery. And they say once again, puberty may be like a swinging bridge. If not given the lure to mastery, what is a swinging bridge? Anybody that walked across a bridge, we drive on bridges that are stable. But in ancient times, they used to have bridges over gorge, gorges or rivers that were rope bridges that wasn't secured like the bridges that we have. So if you walked and, and started a rhythm, it would start swinging like a like like a swing outside but the only difference is your life is really on the line if you didn't do it right it could swing all the way over and spin and flip you off so puberty without a lure to mastery for our young people is like a swinging bridge i want you to think about when we lose a lot of the young people that we work with, when we lose a lot of the young people in, in, in our lives, we lose them at puberty. Why? Because we have no institutions in our community that present our children with a lure to master. We present them with a lure to sleep. That's what we present them with. We present them with a lure to boredom, right? And for those that don't understand, boredom, shares the same um the same emotion 
as disgust. Boredom and disgust are basically the same. Right? We present, we do not present lures to mastery. Right? We need it. If we don't do nothing but teach our kids juggling. Right? And I'm just, and, 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 and yeah, we could focus on the sports. We could focus on the martial arts. You know what I'm saying? We could focus, but we need to start getting our kids lures to mastery. And some of these lures that we need to start getting them with, we need to start tricking them because a lure is a trick. Tricking them into mathematics. Tricking them into physics. You know what I'm saying? Tricking them. You know what I'm saying? It's a lure. It's a trick. Our ancestors used to trick individuals into, into their path. Right? You know what I'm saying? Even though you thought you was going your own way. Nah. The elders, oh, the elders set it up and tricked you. You, you, you thought your whole life you wanted to be a doctor, not knowing that they named you. The name they gave you led you in that direction. The exercises that they put you through put you in that direction. They lured you. They tricked you. And we got to start tricking some of our kids because that's what they're doing on the streets. Right? They use the lure. What's the lure? The lure is the money. But it's not really about the money. It's about the adventure. It's about the stories that they form out there. Where in our community are we providing our children with healthy, exciting stories and adventures that they could share with their friends? You know, everything got to be so serious with us. You know what I'm saying? Or too silly. We got to start building memories. We got to start, we, we got to make being adults something that our children want to do. You know what I'm saying? Want to become. Rather than just... You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, some of us, as we grew up, we just wanted to become adults so that we could, quote, unquote, do what we wanted to do. Not pursue. <laughs> only, only to find out that we couldn't do it exactly what we wanted. Right. To find, out, to find out that you can't do what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? We have to start. We have to start apprentice. Uh, we, uh, we need to bring back apprenticeship. You know what I'm saying? We need to start we need to start throwing out these lures so that our children when our young adults cuz at puberty they, they become where they can start mastering skills. You know what I'm saying? Mastering mind states, mastering prayer, mastering so, uh, meditation, if can, huh? If I can also add in um you know, t- taking that, that inventory of even studying and looking at our young people and what they're good at and making sure that we groom them in what th- that thing that they're, that they're good at, that skill set that is going to benefit ultimately our community, our family. Uh, our lineage is going, going on down the line so that they will be walking in, in their purpose and not just chasing some, some, something empty. Um, Cause I, in a lot of a lot of ways, our our kids have too many choices. Man, if they what? don't feel like doing certain thing, they 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 get an opportunity to opt out. Um, where, you know, if I when I was when I was young, if I started something, whether it was piano or if it was football or if it was uh, some engineering program, I had to see it through to the end. I was not allowed to quit. Hmm. Oh, you weren't allowed. To, you weren't allowed to cry sour grapes, huh? No. <laughs> so you started this process. You want to see it through to the end, man. Listen, I mean, and a lot of that is really it, that 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 what you're talking about. That framework, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like because check this out. What does a lure do? We know of lure and fishing. You throw the lure out, the fish follow it. Once the fish bit on it. Like like Brother D just described, like the traveler just described. That fish got to fight very hard to get off, but in most cases he can't. Right? Once cause you got him hooked. Right. You got him hooked. Right? And we need to, you know, you know, and, and you and, and we got to, you know, I mean it's like our, our kids are, are given so many choices and and the world that they see is not the world that we're presenting them. You understand what I'm saying? It's like, 
they honestly believe that they have freedoms that really aren't that good for them. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to say they have freedoms that really aren't. Because at certain ages, when should, a, when should a human being be allowed to make choices? Free choices. Outside of the realm, you know what I'm saying? Outside of the realm of the adults. See, because this is what we got going on in the schools. We got young people making decisions. And when there's consequences, when there's consequences for these decisions, right, the adults want to come in and fight with the other adults, basically in front of the kids, about the decision that the kids made. Rather than say, hey, we all got to work together. That You, you didn't have the right to make that decision. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, of course, nowadays that's seen as child abuse. For, for you to check your child in today's world, child abuse. You ain't got to put your hands on them. You're not giving that child a... Uh, 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 Freedom. You know what I'm saying? I know what I would have did with freedom at 12 years old. You know, right. I mean, you know, what I'm saying? So, you know, we have to put that because, and then on top of that, the word responsibility keep popping up because, of course, today is it is Ujima collective work and responsibility. It's our responsibility to start figuring out how to put these lures out there because our children and <laughs> Our young adults are dying because we're not throwing them out there. We're not giving them lures to mastery. And, I, and understand, understand that mastery was very important in our culture. You know what I'm saying? Only here today is a master appreciated. Masters in our tradition. It, it's like right now, like I said, man, we, we train our people to be jack of all trades. You know what I'm saying? I know somebody that fix cars. He fix TVs. He builds houses. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, like he real round. But he, he have to do everything. You know what I'm saying? We need masters. We need to bring right. a generation of masters up. Right? Because you can't slave. You, 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 you can't enslave a master. You can't. You know what I'm saying? You can't enslave a master. Yeah, and, so, and what you were saying, how t- made me made me think of, of this. When you're talking about today being Ujima, collective work and responsibility. Let's just break down that responsibility, the ability to respond to whatever situation it is is given. Right now, because we do not teach, teach our young people to have the ability to respond or have responsibility. We have a whole bunch of individuals that are out here that are reacting to everything. Mm. They're not think, th- they're not thinking anything out. They're not looking at the. There's a possibility that this may happen if I do this, and this is going to be to my. This is going to be my response. So this is going to be my answer to this problem or this situation instead of reacting to the situation that I'm facing. Mm. Mm. So that the responsibility is an ability to respond or its ability to be able to situation and have a plan of action to deal with said situation or said problem. So you saying that most people don't live with responsibility. They live with reactability. (laughs) <laughs> yes. Stop being in reactability. Stop practicing reactability. Replace reactability with responsibility. You know what I'm saying? Um so so we have to begin to lay out the foundation for developing those institutions that train our young people and bring them into a mind state of mastery. Right? What is mastery? Mastery is when you have command of a skill, not you, you know, what I'm saying mastery is com- you don't like, for example, in schools. Because I was gonna bring this um, at one of the trainings one day that we're, all, we're, we're, we're giving our children a false sense of self esteem. We, we, we so used to boosting their self esteem, so our children will do something, and we, we will say they have mastered it, 
But mastery is different than proficient. Most of our young people and most of us are proficient at things in our lives because we have not invested the true libations, you know, including the time. Now, what are the true libations, Brother Hatem? Here's a libation. This is a drink that I sacrificed to make, and it's a great libation. But the highest forms of libations, in order from lowest to highest, right, is sweat, tears, then blood. Mastery requires an individual to invest sweat, tears, and blood. Which means they have to spend massive amounts of time on it, right? Uh, in science, they estimate upwards of 10,000 hours to become a master. Most of our kids are becoming proficient in something, right? Unless we talk words. Then we allow them to spend 10,000 hours on something. Beyond 10,000 hours. Master. We really need to start looking at this. We really need to start focusing on this. As adults right now, many of us have to really evaluate, have we mastered anything? Have you mastered anything? You have to, we have to start moving back to a culture that, that loves masters, that appreciate masters. That rewards masters. <coughs> you know what I'm saying? All right, let's move on because I'm, you know what I'm saying? We almost at 10 o'clock. I don't even believe time went that fast. All right. Um, the adult phase marks responsibility or the ability to respond. The knowledge holders, a greater level of mastery. A, the adult phase marks responsibility. A greater level of uh, mastery. So, our ancestors understood that adulthood, becoming a true adult, makes you master. Now, I need you to understand this, right? Because a lot of us, we still caught up on this. You become an adult. Well, you're an adult at 18. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You're saying whose culture? You need to get out as soon as you turn 18. And whose culture is 18 and adult? 18 is a capable a, a, a capable person. They're capable, but are they adult? Right? True adulthood, true manhood comes through, in a sense, trials and tribulations that have been formulated by that community. True womanhood, womanhood comes from trials. And struggles formulated by that community. You can't just stand up in a traditional society and talk about you a man because you had a birthday. You you happen to stay alive for eighteen cycles of the sun. No, it was deeper than that. You had to show a low level, a level even a level of proficiency to even be accepted. And then when you was accepted. You still had to strive. See, this is why I always get bothered about this whole rites of passage piece being about children. It's not about the children. It's about the whole damn community. And be and it's a damn community because we have allowed we have allowed others to determine to determine what we use our culture for. Rites of Passage brought everybody through. When I was training the young people, I was going through a test. And the elders that was watching over me was going through a test. That when it came time for us to show and prove, we was able to show and prove. And contribute. I'm going to say that word again. Contribute. To our tribe, to our collective, to our nation. Many of us want a nation build without contributing. Right? We want a we want a nation build. You saying 
but we don't want to spend no money. We want to write a grant for it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Marcus Garvey, and I, I, it, it rings in my head, he said, any leadership that will teach you to depend on another race is a leadership that will sell you into slavery. What y'all think about that? This says, the adult phase marks responsibility. We don't, and see, see, y'all be thinking I be playing, right? I didn't plan to put this show on Ujima. Matter of fact, the show was going before, before I discovered the week. I do say I discovered the week, <laughs> right? It was just laying there. They weren't using it. So I discovered the week and I named it. Today is Ujima, right? I didn't. And, and that, that, that's defined as collective work responsibility. It says adult, the adult phase. It don't even say adulthood. It says the adult phase. This, 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 right. just, just, this is just one phase. So this goes into being generational people, right? We understand that we are in a continuum. Ancestor, child, warrior, um, Warrior, nation builder, elder, ancestor, child. It's a cycle that goes on and on. Facebook, you're going to get enough of fucking with me, right? I mean, I don't understand, right? Now, the adult phase marks responsibility. As he said, the ability to respond. See, as a master, you have the ability to respond. And once again, I ask you, what have you mastered? And then I ask you, what do you have your children working on mastering? Or at least why they try to find themselves, because a lot of times, and, 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 and I have to stress this, because I know some of the people out there have children that's listening to me, right? It always amazes me how the things that our children are good at, we don't appreciate. I'm guilty of that myself. I grew up with that. The stuff that I like to do, the stuff that I want to master, all my family, all my family, and all the adults around me told me that's stupid. Get away from it. Right? We need to find what our children are good at, and we need to encourage them in that. Right? Because it's crazy to me how other people can look at their child riding bikes, jumping over stuff, and come up with a league for them. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Finance a league for them. You know what I'm saying? Listen <clears> to them. <throat> listen, you know, watch them ride, you know, little basically boards on wheels and say, we can turn right. it into a sport. Hey, go ahead. Hey, check this out. I, my, my pool, I'm emptying my pool out. Right? You go on a skateboard on that pool. You know what I'm saying? And these kids invent skate parks. Because they got the go on, you know, go on discover, go on create. We ain't doing that. We ain't doing that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, I, often slaves can't do that. You can't. Your children aren't allowed to be free. Your your children have to uh, get programmed. They have to fit into the program properly. All right. Um, a greater level of mastery. That's what they say about the dope. And the last one is marriage is unity for making sense of the shoulders. And making is the power of energy. So, when, when we bring the masculine energy and the feminine energy together, when we bring the energies together, right, they create. And in creating, see, because we think that when we come together, we only create when somebody is pregnant. But y'all have to understand, right? Every time we exchange an energy, something is being born. Have you ever sat and talked with somebody and the ideas that y'all had intermingled, male or female, and when you left, you left out with a new thought that just stated in your mind, grew into something? Is that not the problem of birth? Is that not the process of, birth? you know what I'm saying? It's like we, we, we overlook so much, you know what I'm saying? 
every time we have, every time, every time you become sexually active, you're giving birth to something. Y'all need to understand that. It ain't just when, when, when she get pregnant. Every time you, in every time you go into the sexual act, you give birth to something. Responsibility, right? So but the power, they say, in making, in making is the power of energy. Marriage is unity for making. When you come together in marriage, y'all come together as one. And, and when those two, because I want y'all to think about this. How do we, how do they cause a nuclear explosion? They take two very small elements and they come, they make them run into each other. Pow! Right? A whole block gone. Now those two of them ran into other ones. Now a, 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 a city's gone. Right? We got to understand that every time we come together, when we bring those two elements, those two elements that's masculine and feminine together, pow, creation can happen. Creation or destruction. Right? Because he's, he's, he's saying making is the power of energy. So when we come together in marriage, in unity for making, marriage is unity for making. We have the ability to unify to make something. Some of us are making confusion. Some of us are making sadness. Whether you're conscious of it or not, in the in the unit that you have formed, you are making something. Now that you know, you could be responsible for your creations. I have to remind myself every time every day. I'm responsible for what I'm doing. I gotta think about this. I ask questions. I, you know, I'm always, what if, what if, what, boom, 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 boom. I'm creating all types of shit around me, right? But hey, brother, do you got something? Do you want to, you want to close with? Cause I'm gonna end it. Cause I don't want to drag this on. Word. And say, well, I guess to speak to that, to that marriage page, just, just to, to add in, into it, it's. It's also looked at as a combination or a mixture of two or more elements coming into the mix of things. So whatever energy you're bringing to the table and people that you surround yourself, the energy that they're bringing when you come together, is it coming together to create something beautiful or is it coming together to create something to be detrimental to your success, your lineage, your legacy? Mm. Your future. Mm. Is it gonna be beneficial? I mean, I mean, real talk. Because I mean, and then you know, because a lot of us don't have the adults around us to have um, conversations with. You know what I'm saying? That's the responsibility of us that's moving towards eldership. You know what I'm saying? That's the responsibility for a lot of us, and, and uh. I, I just want to first, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. I want to thank my sponsor for providing me with a drink. You got to come in, you know, toast with us. I send a, send a bottle with you. Um, be sure to check us out on at our site, gjourney.com. All the books are on the tabs. Um, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like, subscribe, and most importantly, share. Also, follow Spreaker, Okay. This is Brother I Tim. I want to thank y'all for a powerful night. I want to thank you for coming out as usual. And with that, we are out. Peace.